Welcome to another episode of The Ronnie Phillips Show. I'm your host, Ronnie Phillip, with the Kingley Group at Keller Williams Realty, coming to you live from my office here in North Dallas. I have a very awesome and amazing guest on my show. He is an author, a speaker, and a strategic coach, Mr. Jake Woodard. <laughs> How are you doing today, brother? Good, man. I'm just sharing this video to my page right now so more people can get a ton of value from this because we're about to go deep on this, this yes. interview here. So today we're going to talk about his new book, The Power of Vision, How to Live Life on Your Own Terms. So if you're watching this video, make sure you give this a thumbs up, leave us some hearts, give us some comments. Let us know where you're watching from so that way we know who's watching. And uh, if you have any questions for us, uh, please uh, be sure to drop them below. So Jake, please give an introduction of yourself. Well, first of all, thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here and pleasure to be here for your audience and to serve people because this has become my life's work. And what do I mean by that? My story started out like this. I was, I grew up in a small town in upstate New York, small farm country town. And I had always had big aspirations and I had a ton of energy and and when I was growing up as a child, I had ADHD and just extreme amounts of energy. And I was a place in every single assisted yeah. learning class, assisted English, assisted math, everything assisted because of my extreme energy. And I didn't know what to do with all this energy. Mm -hmm. So the outlet that I chose to put my energy into was eating because yeah. <laughs> I couldn't keep my little chubby hands out of the snack cabinet. And you know, as much as I love my mother, she wasn't very disciplined with, with my eating as a child. And so like, I'm not blaming her. It's obviously my own fault. I take responsibility for everything in my own life. But I, so I, I, I was overweight a lot of my life. I was actually, you know, obese at one point. And that's like the surface level stuff, right? Cause I was picked on and bullied as a kid for being fat and overweight. And it's a huge thing in our society. A lot of people struggle with that. But like I said, like that's like the surface level to my pain because when I was 13 years old, I watched my older sister, who was my hero, and you know I'm thankful for what had actually happened. I watched her stick a needle in her arm, mm -hmm. and she became addicted to heroin. So being a young boy, you don't know what that means. You don't know why she would do this. I mean, your older sibling is like normally your hero for the oh, most absolutely. part. I mean, for anybody, every, any of your listeners that have an older sibling, they probably know exactly what I'm talking about. And then, so at the time I'm living with my mother and she's in the basement. My little sister's living there as well. And I look across the hallway and I'm like looking at my little sister. I'm like, what's she going to think of this? Like I have to like protect her. Yeah. So I went through this, this about five to seven years of battling with my, first my own personal issue, obesity and being overweight and bullied and picked on, but watching this literally monster unfold in front of my eyes and it, it put me in a deep state of suffering, depression, I was suicidal at points and I was in a very dark place. I struggled with alcoholism, I, would, I got really deep into alcohol, I was like blacking out just about every week, you know, twice a week at, at certain times. And what I was, was feeling and, and also the relationship with my father was terribly toxic, yeah. physically, emotionally abusive. You know, luckily now we have an amazing relationship through all the internal work that I've done and development my own self. But what I realized coming out of this consciously was I had two choices. Choice number one was continue to be a victim of my own life and blame others and hope people felt bad for me which yeah. a lot of people in our society are doing right now they're they're playing the victim role and life was always everything was happening to me oh poor me poor me poor me my life is so bad it sucks right and then option number two was take responsibility in my life i had i had to take responsibility i had to take responsibility to change now if you're not willing to take responsibility of your own life then your life will never change so when I learned to take responsibility in my own life, I developed this insatiable hunger for knowledge. And so I did all of this self work and all of this internal work and developed, you know, I started reading a book a week for the last four years. I've read a book yeah. a week and listening to podcasts, listen to amazing shows like the, the Ronnie Phillips show. Appreciate <laughs> <You know>? it. <laughs> and you know, so I developed this insatiable hunger and I, I, I started feeding my mind with all this great material getting around and then two years into it, I got around mentors yeah. and I was like, oh wow, like people are gonna like help me and I've been doing this for 20 years. And so that's really where my, 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 my life started to unfold even quicker. 
and I'm just so grateful to you know now do what I do working with people one-on-one -on -one to help them clear out internal conflict teaching them how to leverage their past pain instead of being a victim of it yeah and find a deeper sense of meaning in this life yeah so like um, you had a background of you came from New York right mm -hmm. and you were working at a job and you're very very comfortable and you took this leap to come and move to Dallas where, where when we met when we met you're you're still in New York and I was telling you you got to make the move to Dallas and guess you listened to me so um, what got you um, to make that jump like what was inside you that made you say hey I'm gonna quit this very comfortable job and come move here a lion a, like, a line, it felt like a line was inside of my body that was like clawing at the inside of my body, just like saying, get out of here, get out of here, like literally like felt like that. And so, you know, I was at a great career. I don't even like to use the word career. We were just talking about this before we went live. I don't like using that word because society calls it a career, you know, a career or a job. And I was at like the dream job, high salary, great benefits, vacation time, everything you could ever dream of for having a job. You know, the 30 year and, and retire and get the gold watch and all of that. And about uh, six to 12 months into the job, I really started questioning things. Yeah. So I was like, man, like I'm looking around, I see all these older people that are making a ton of money and they're making 150, 200 K a year, somewhat even more than that. And they're not happy. Their relationships are failing. Their health is failing. And a lot of their personal areas in their life are failing. And I'm like, wow, like if I stay here for the next 20, 30 years and I stay in this routine, this perpetual state of just mundane thinking and not having to think when you go to work, it's like, what am I going to be doing when I'm 50? I, I, I had this awakening moment and I was just like, I got to get out of here. So what I did was I set a deadline. I gave myself six months to leave. And because I'm so impatient, I left in six weeks. So. Wow. <laughs> six weeks. So... <laughs> You definitely uh, sped that up. So, But a as an interjection here, I spent years in developing myself, studying psychology, personal development, business, entrepreneurship before I took that leap. So anybody that's looking to leave your job right now, transition. Don't, I mean, obviously you can quit and just leave your job. I don't know if that'd be the best investment of, of your time. Transition out of it if you're really looking to become an entrepreneur. I'd give that little insight there, definitely. Yeah, so... So when you're when you're making this leap, like, what were you thinking as far as like, you you set a deadline for six months and you did in six weeks. What what changed when you did in six weeks? Man, it was just my fear. I, yeah. I I kept telling myself, I'm like, you're not ready yet. Like, you don't have enough experience. You're not smart enough. Who are you to go build a business? Who are you to go speak and motivate and inspire people and write a book? And all these little annoying negative voices kept chirping and popping up so what I started doing was just addressing those voices and really rewiring the way I was thinking which was all fear that the number one thing that in, in my prediction in my belief that stops people is fear fear of rejection fear of failure fear of going broke fear of the unknown whatever it is it's always it's always anchored back to fear yeah so when you begin to challenge those fears those fears begin to die and they dissipate. So I really started challenging these fears and I started asking myself this one question. And it's a great question for your viewers or listeners to really grasp. What is the worst that can happen? Yeah. What is the worst that can happen? And once I started like really, I'm like, I'm thinking about it. Well, um, I could go broke. I could, and I'm like thinking about it. I'm like, well, it's not really that terrible. I'm like, I, I could survive this. It's, it's, so I, I just, I made, I made the leap, man. I, I, I took the leap of faith and it's like jumping, entrepreneurship to me is like jumping out of a plane and building the parachute on the way down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that, that's what I did two years ago when I started my real estate career is the same thing. I could have went to pharmacy school. I could have went to nursing school. I could have went to uh, medical school even, but I decided to take the leap and pursue this and it's paid off tremendously in the past two years. So that's one thing I observed that was very similar on our stories, you know, as you know, on our journey as young businessmen and entrepreneurs, because uh, Jake is only 27, <laughs> this is a young guy. So 
for those of you watching out there, but the millennials, like you can make your dreams, you know, happen in your life. And he wrote a book. So let's go into, into that on like <laughs> what, what your whole book is about, the power of your vision. You know, it's funny that I, I wrote a book because as a child, I, my mom couldn't even get me to read a book. She would try to like get me to even listen to a page of a book, like her reading. And I still wouldn't, like, I couldn't stand it. And I just had no patience. And I had so much energy, I couldn't sit down and fathom writing a book. But when I finally got to the point where I'm like, I want to share this message with this world. I have, I have a message to share that you can live life on your terms, not on somebody else's terms. And when that message came to me, I was like, I have to put this in, in many outlets as possible. The book was just one of them. These videos, you know, anything I do speaking, it's, it's all the message. And when I realized that, I sat down and I, I wrote this book within two weeks. I channeled the whole book. I did just nonstop writing, typing, 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 typing. And I typed with two fingers too. And I was like yeah. pounding on the keyboards. <laughs> and, you know, being completely transparent, like I'm not a good typer. And, and I'm just like flowing because I'm so inspired because I had been doing all this personal development and all this, this internal work and everything I could get my hands on to learn and grow and just everything. So I wrote this book really as an inspiration to others and really for a workbook for other people because each chapter is, is really how to create a roadmap for your life and gain clarity, remove mental barriers, I like to call them, that stop people from having success. But you know, whatever, wherever you are in your journey, you'll have takeaways from it. One of my friends and mentors who's been in a personal development, business entrepreneurship for over 10 years was sending me pictures of things that he was underlining in the book when he was reading on the plane home. Yeah, <laughs> that's, pre that's pretty awesome, man. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, your journey, like, you know, from the beginning, like before you got into this. So how, how did this all kind of start? So it was born out of pain and suffering, man. Yeah. I, I, I wanted more in this life. And if you want more in this life, you have to be willing to go through the shit. Yeah. Like you, it's like without a hot, there is no cold. If you never ate a shitty meal, you would never enjoy a good meal. Like, yeah. and I apologize for cursing on your show here. Oh, very good. And you have to like go through that pain. You have to go through that struggling. So I am so grateful for the pain that I felt as a child because, and through my teen years, because it wouldn't have inspired me to lose over 70 pounds, to become an entrepreneur, to write a book, to speak on stages. I was a fat kid with a stutter and now I'm a public speaker. Yeah. So like for anybody out there that thinks that you can't do it and I just have all of these limiting beliefs, anybody can do it because everybody, each and every single person is gonna go through something in their life. They're gonna hit adversities. And it's not about comparison of well, my pain's worse than yours because yeah. it's all in perspective. Right, so what you perceive to be highly painful, I may not think is painful at all, or vice versa. So it's all in your perspective of the world. That's how it. That's how it all begins. Yeah, and you know, I think is how you, how you see the world. If you ch can change your perspective, that's really really important. So um, let's talk about you know getting out of your own way because we discussed <laughs> this before we went live, and I thought it was gold. So. Tell, tell us a little bit of our conversation, what we're talking about. Well, you know, when, when people say you got to get out of your own way, you have to first realize that you're in your own way. Yeah. Because if you don't even consciously realize that you're in your own way, you'll never get out of your own way. And when people think of being in their own way, they probably think of some physical external thing. It's not. It's right here, right? Because... Our thoughts are dictating our life. They're, they're creating our physical reality. Now that may sound kind of heavy, but thinking about it like this, on average, approximately the adult, I'll say the adult, not children, makes about 35,000 conscious decisions a day. 35,000 conscious decisions. So you're making decisions every single minute, every single moment. And those decisions are shaping your life, right? You know, for example, like if, if you're overweight, and you're choosing, deciding to eat things that don't serve your body and your physical body, it's gonna make you sluggish, it's gonna lower your energy, it's gonna you know, make you unhealthy, you're not gonna to wanna to build that business, you're probably not gonna find your dream lover, so you really have to think about it in that sense, it's all in perspective. And if you're trying to make more money, and you're trying to build a business, but you won't even take the time to consciously invest in learning and developing your mindset, you're not gonna build a successful business, you're not gonna become an entrepreneur. 
you know? And I think entrepreneur in, in our world right now is a very like Hot sexy ter term, right? Yeah. And people think that entrepreneurship is sexy because, oh, they see people freedom and traveling the world and making good money, but they didn't see the years that that person spelt, spent suffering. Yeah. They didn't see that, that, that part when they were in the mud, in the weeds. They didn't see that part. So when you realize that you're going to have to go through something before you get handed something, because in our world, whatever you believe in, not religious, spiritual, whatever you believe in, the world doesn't just, the universe doesn't just hand you things. You have to work and earn for that. That's my belief. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's like you really want to monitor what thoughts you're putting out to the world and what thoughts you're having in here internally and externally because that's shaping your life. Yeah, so when you're talking about thoughts and different things like that, um, you you uh, believe in like law of attraction, right? Of course. So talk to the audience of what that is because there's been a lot of these little documentaries out there and stuff like that. I wanted to get your perspective on what the law of attraction is and how it's helped in your life. <laughs> when I first heard the term law of attraction, like probably a lot of your listeners, I was like, all right, what drugs are these people taking? I remember I was actually mowing lawn and I was listening to a podcast and I started talking about um, law of attraction. And I'm like, law of attraction? I'm like, this sounds like some woo-woo fluffy stuff, right? But when I seen that happen in my own life, when I began to manifest, bring about things into my own life based off of my own thoughts and the way I was thinking, man, everything changed. When I, when I realized that by writing down goals and on a piece of pen and paper, there's a tip for you. Write down your goals in pen and paper. I mean, I'm sure a lot of your listeners know that. If, if you're not doing it, I encourage you to. But when your mind sees it, you can bring it into your life. You know, for example, if you want to attract money into your life or a beautiful lover, whatever it is you want, or building a business, write it down with a date. By this date, I will have so-and-so or a certain amount of money. Whatever it is you want, that will manifest into your life eventually. Now, here's the thing most people miss is patience. They want it right then and yeah. now, like we were talking about at the beginning of the show, because Amazon Prime is like the one click of the button and then one day it's there. Yeah. But your life is not like that. It's not it, like that. It's a developmental process and if you don't treat it with patience and, and be willing to go through those hard times, you, you're not gonna make it. Yeah, and like someone once told me is like, the law of attraction only works if you do. <laughs> you know, you can't just be wishing and yeah. you know, things magic does happen but you do have to put in the work out there because mm -hmm. I believe um, to get what you want here's my formula it's first have clarity on exactly what you want second thing be willing to put in the work have good intentions and it will come to you exactly so and there's also a law called the law of action yes <laughs> and if you're if you're just sitting around visualizing all these nice things coming into your life and you're just sitting on the sofa People are gonna come take your sofa away and probably just leave you sitting on the ground there. So you really need to get your ass up and, and go make it happen. Like it doesn't just happen by by sitting there visualizing, like just with your eyes closed all day, like visualize, you have to really do the work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but once you start putting in the work, literally mountains will move and the universe will conspire to give you what you want. You, you read the book, uh, The Alchemist? Yeah, that was, one, that was a great book. So it, it, it talks a lot about that in that book. So, um, so yeah, um, Power Your Vision, um, really, really awesome book. Um, was there anything else? Oh, did, did we talk about overcoming fear? A little bit. I, <laughs> fear is the number one thing that's yeah. going to stop people. I mean, that, that's obvious, but that's the, the first thing that you're going to have to deal with is your own fear. Yeah. And really taking a good look at your fears and challenging them. Because fear in the modern world is mostly made up. You know, a lot of it's in our minds and we're just, we're thinking it to be real. You know, it's like back in the day when we were nomadic creatures or cavemen, you had real, real, real fear. You had fear of, uh, you know, like a saber tooth tiger jumping out of the bush and biting you or getting stabbed by a stick or getting attacked by another tribe or whatever it was. Those are real fears. Those are traumatic fears. But a lot of our fears, like I was mentioned, mentioning, the fear of rejection, the fear of fail, failure and all that stuff, it really, you have to challenge those fears. Yeah, so um, yeah, getting out of your own way, um, really you know, taking action, like all these different steps we're, we're saying in this video, hopefully that really helped y'all guys. Um, 
So, I mean, yeah, if, if there are people on here that are trying to, you know, become an entrepreneur or entrepreneurs, here's the deal. If your personal life is not strong, if it's not thriving, I don't care how successful of a business you build, it, you're never going to bring happiness into your life because you can build millions of dollars in wealth. But here's the deal. If your relationships are failing and your health is failing and your emotional, your mental state is not in control, then you're not going to have happiness. And if you live with this, I'll be happy when mentality, I'll be happy when I get that Ferrari, I'll be happy when I make $200,000 a year. I'll be happy when I marry the dream guy or girl. Happiness won't exist because you'll get to that happiness and you'll find something else to be upset about and something else will pop up and it'll come up and it'll ruin your day and say, oh man, well, I'll just have to wait until I'm happy again. And this is what happens in our society. Yeah, it's, it's this constant chase, right? Mm -hmm. And what I learned is be happy now because mm -hmm. feel good now, like uh, my mentor and friend, Colton Lindsay says, so feel good now um, because that's where life is happening. Life is happening now. It's not happening in the past. And uh, you get depression from thinking about the past and you get anxiety thinking about the future, right? So um, what I learned is, have you read the book, The Power of Now? Mm -hmm. so, Eckhart Tolle? Yes. Yeah, of course. So it talks about really being the present. That book blew my mind. Yeah. So, uh, that's a deep book. I wouldn't recommend that reading that to, you know, if you're just starting out in personal development, that's a lot of like consciousness talk and it's, it's very deep. It's spiritual. It's awesome. It's a great book depending on where you are in your journey, you know? So it's just like, I mean, when I first started out, I remember the first book that I read was uh, rich dad, poor dad. Yes. I know a lot of people read that one and I was so excited and so inspired. I just wanted to like, you know, start helping other people realize that they have you know, gifts within them. But the question is, are you going to share that gift with the world? And if you're not, then why are you being selfish? Yeah. And like, how, how do you determine what your gift is? Well, you got to start with really asking yourself powerful questions. I would really start with digging deep and saying, you know, what is it that I love? What would I do if money were no object? And write this down. If you're taking notes right now, like I know a lot of your listeners yes. are, and yeah. when they catch us on the replay, what do I love? What would I do if money were no object and why am I here, right? Because when you remove money from the equation, you begin to gain a sense of clarity. And there's like, I believe there's like a three step process to finding your purpose, a lot of people like to call it. Number one, it starts with curiosity. What are some areas that you're curious about in your life? What are some things that really interest you? What are some things that you think about consciously often or just consume a lot of your thinking that you're obsessed with? Number two, passions. What are things that you are passionate about? Curiosity is gonna lead you to passions. Once you find areas that you're passionate about, then you're gonna move into purpose. Because once you have developed and, and understood your passions, then you can kind of form that into your, your, your purpose. And then you can begin to build your business and lifestyle around that purpose, your gifts. That's, I mean, each, and here's the thing is a lot of people are like, oh, well, not everyone's meant to become an entrepreneur. Well. I would challenge that because I think everybody could, but it's a question of do you want to? A lot of people are okay with settling in society. They're okay with the average job, the average house, the average income, whatever, the average family. It's, it's all, that's fine. But if you want more in life, you have to dig deeper yep. and you have to ask yourself those challenging questions and ask yourself them often because repetition will get you there. It's like, for example, tying your shoes. You're probably really good at tying your shoes because you've done it a million times. But you have to ask yourself these powerful questions over and over and over and over again. You don't just wake up after never reading a book or going into a, a seminar or talking to mentors or, or great people like yourself and just come to your realization that, well, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I love this. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. You have to really lay the groundwork for your life and it starts with investing in yourself. Yeah, so like uh, digging deeper, I mean, just through the past two years, I've spent so much money on seminars, <laughs> books, um, masterminds, different things like that. So it's, it's all really what I found was mentorship was like the fastest path and mastermind groups mm -hmm. were the fastest path um, to success. So my main thing is on how I'm, you know, rising to the top um, quickly is find people with the results you want. 
Yeah. That that I think that is just so important in life because you can read all the books and stuff like that, but if it's believable, like for example, uh, last episode, Austin Good, he owns thirty two million dollars in real estate mm-hmm. by the time he's thirty two. That's a guy with the results I want, right? So it's just like if you can find those type of mentors, um, it makes things more believable that you can actually achieve it. Mm. I know, man. I was I, I love like everything about a mentor. Here's the thing with a mentor: you want to find someone that you're in alignment with. Absolutely. Because if you don't, if you're not in alignment and there's no synergy there, it doesn't work. I I fell in love with mentors so much I became one, right? Yeah. So I started helping other people find their purpose and their gifts in life, and gaining that sense of clarity and clearing out all of that fear. Cause that, that's what it is fear you know people are so afraid in our society that that they're you know all the things I already mentioned so so yeah um, so yeah <laughs> this guys is fun man <laughs> th- this was awesome so if y'all want to see more videos of me and Jake if you want to see us uh, doing more videos like that make sure you comment below I'm gonna post a link to his book um, in the comment sections and then uh, we're going to be posting our YouTube channels as well. So make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and his YouTube channel as well. And um, where's your book? That's Let's right see. here. <laughs> so we'll, this is this is the book, guys. The Power of Revision. It's on Amazon and it is on, um, you can get it the, the, Kindle. What's it the Kindle and the paper copy as well. And then you're releasing the audio book yeah. as well. Sure, so, yeah. so that's really it, guys. That's uh, the episode uh, 12 of the Ronnie Phillips Show. If you have found this of value, please share it with your friends and family. And don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'd love to help you out in any way we can. Mm -hmm. Not only for me buying and selling real estate. If you all need anything from me, um, reach out. And then make sure you follow my friend Jake. He has incredible content on his uh, Facebook page and his YouTube channel. So make sure you follow him. And uh, make sure you all share that video. And if you all haven't, give this a thumbs up already. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. So, um, we'll if you need, if you need anyone to come and speak for your company, I also do trainings for companies as well. And if you're interested in working with me one-on-one, reach out to me. I have an application that you could fill out and we'll go from there. Okay. Awesome, man. <laughs> well, thank you so much for thank you, brother. Um, being on the show. It was an honor and, uh, uh, take care guys.